I've got five free college football winners for you on Saturday. What else would I have? After all, this is the Power Five. If you're new to the show here on Wedge Talk TV, we're on a 131, 108, and 7 run with these free plays. Make sure you're subscribed to our YouTube channel. You can always go ahead and let me know what you think of these selections down in the comments section below. And if you agree, don't be afraid about smashing that like button. Last Saturday... We were 4-1, including Arkansas, Vandy, and Texas Tech all pulling off big upsets. Admittedly, we had just Vandy just in the first half, but still, uh, they were winning outright in the first half, and they went on to win the game outright. So that was good. Here we go for this week, noon Eastern time. What a little maction to get your Saturday started. I already gave you one Mac play for Saturday uh, on Friday's show. Here's another Buffalo plus 9.5 versus Toledo. I am not sold at all on this Toledo team. While the Rockets did avenge a loss in last year's MAC title game to Miami of Ohio last week, and they defeated Mississippi State or in the or Mississippi State's no good, okay? I know they're an SEC team, but they're no good. Uh, anyway, Toledo's been unconvincing against the likes of Duquesne and UMass. Uh, this feels like a bit of a letdown spot for Jason Candle's team after the big win last week, and they have Northern Illinois and Bowling Green on deck. Meanwhile, Buffalo coming off a bye. The Bulls have already gone to Northern Illinois and won. Now, of course, Northern Illinois has won at Notre Dame. Uh, now, Buffalo did get humiliated. I mean, just run out of the building at, at UConn two weeks ago, which certainly wasn't good. But I think that result's given us some value with Pete Lembo's side. Last season in the Glass Bowl, Buffalo actually outgained Toledo in a 31-13 loss that was marred by a defensive score and a blocked punt. Seems like every season Toledo loses one conference game as a favorite for 2024. Could it be this one? Maybe. Take the points, Buffalo. Number two, Cincinnati, plus three and a half at UCF. This one kicks off 3.30 Eastern in the bounce house. What on earth has happened to Central Florida the last two weeks? Losses to Colorado and Florida have totally changed. The season trajectory for the Knights, whose effort last week up in the swamp was just downright pathetic. As for Cincinnati, they could easily be sitting at 5-0 straight up coming into this game. The Bearcats' two losses, which were against Pittsburgh and Texas Tech, have been by a combined four points. They blew a 27-6 lead in the second half to Pitt, who is still undefeated, by the way, both straight up and against the spread. Then a pick six and a missed field goal on the final play. Uh, was that missed field goal. That was the difference that cost Cincy in Lubbock, a game where they outgained Texas Tech 555 to 482. Bearcats are now off a bye, which means they should be healthier at running back. That was another issue against Texas Tech. No, it's tough to win at the bounce house. And I know it's pretty high on this team a couple weeks ago, but I have not liked what I've seen from Gus Malzahn's troops the last two weeks. I would not be surprised if underdog Cincinnati wins this one outright. Number three. Let's go to the Mountain West and take Colorado State Moneyline versus San Jose State. Uh, that money line should be around minus 115 as we record Friday afternoon. This is another 3.30 Eastern kickoff from Fort Collins. Uh, key here is that Colorado State's gotten healthy again. And wide receiver Torrey Horton is back in the lineup. Horton had nine catches for 158 yards last week at or Oregon State. Pardon me. That was a game the Rams ended up losing in double overtime. Uh, they should be fired up for this. Uh, their conference opener uh, coming off uh, a game that I think they think they should have beaten Oregon State in Corvallis. San Jose State, meanwhile, they do have wide receiver Nick Nash. He's incredible. As a matter of fact, he threw a touchdown pass in the final minute to get by Nevada last week, 35-31. Uh, that came on the heels, though, for San Jose State of their own double overtime loss uh, at Washington State. Besides Nevada, though, San Jose State's other three wins came against Sacramento State, Air Force, and Kennesaw State. The combined records of the four teams that San Jose State has beaten uh, against FBS competition is 1-16 straight up. That is what those four teams are uh, against fellow FBS foes. I think Colorado State beat San Jose State Saturday afternoon. Number four, let's stick with a little Mountain West flavor here and take the aforementioned Nevada plus three and a half at home against Oregon State. Actually, I just talked about both these teams. Uh, Oregon State really has not beaten anyone of note yet. Seems to be a theme here on the show uh, the last couple minutes. Uh, save for Colorado State last week. Uh, and as I already said, that game went to double overtime. 
While three of Nevada's four losses, they've been by five points or less. The one exception was at Minnesota, who just beat USC, so I'll excuse that. I expect the Wolfpack to be pretty fired up for this game, though. 7.30 Eastern time in Reno. As for Oregon State, they've got a home game against UNLV on deck next week, so maybe a look-ahead for the Beavers, uh, who never seem to do as well outside of Corvallis. To that point, they're just 11-21 and 21 straight up in true road game sits the start of the 2018 season. This will be Oregon State's uh, just the second true road game for them in 2024. They did win at San Diego State, but San Diego State is... Uh, struggling under a first-year head coach, Sean Lewis. Looks like some sharp money has already come in on the home dog, Nevada, here. I'll follow it. Plus, take them pl- take the Wolf Pack. Two words. Plus the points. Uh, rounding out the Power Five this week is going to be another home dog, and that is UCLA getting four versus Minnesota. Letdown spot for the Golden Gophers, who just beat USC last week at home, as I mentioned earlier. Now, the Gophers go on the road cross-country, and that kind of travel has been an issue in the early going in Big Ten play, as you might have expected. Thus far, teams traveling at least two time zones, whether it's east to west, west to east, they've gone one and seven straight up in Big Ten games. That's a This is a big drop in class as well for UCLA, who's faced four straight top 18 opponents. Minnesota's not scored more than 27 against any FBS team this season, so they don't profile well as a road favorite. Hopefully USC, or pardon me, UCLA, the Bruins, get Ethan Garbers back at quarterback. This is a 9 Eastern kickoff from the Rose Bowl, by the way. Okay, we now recap the Power 5 in case you forgot something. Number 1, Buffalo plus 9.5 versus Toledo. Number 2, Cincinnati plus 3.5 versus UCF. Number three, Colorado State money line should be around minus 115 against San Jose State. Number four, Nevada plus three and a half at home against Oregon State. Number five, UCLA plus four versus Minnesota. Go ahead, let me know what you think of those selections uh, down in the comments section below. And don't be shy about dropping your best bets for Saturday as well. I always enjoy reading those. I know that I didn't necessarily talk about any of the big games today. But if you'd like my thoughts on those, they are available elsewhere here on Wager Talk TV. Earlier this week, uh, I said to take LSU plus three and a half at home versus Ole Miss. That was Tuesday's edition of the Power Five, to be exact. I was also on Thursday's college football kickoff show, hosted by my good friend Joe Ranieri. I talked about both Texas, Oklahoma, and Penn State, USC on that show. And check out Friday's edition of the Morning Wager, me and Mark Zinno, where I broke down how to play the total in Ohio State, Oregon. All those shows are just another reason to be subscribed to the Wage Talk YouTube channel. Speaking of the morning wager, Mark Zinno and I are partnering up this weekend uh, in more ways than one. You can get the next three days of service from both of us for just $69. That's right. You buy one three-day all-access, you get the other guy free of charge. Mark and I were combined 10 and 1 last Saturday and Sunday. Getting a three-day all-access pass ensures you'll get all of our college football, all of our NFL, and all of our MLB for the weekend. If you're not convinced yet that that's a great deal, check this out. I am number one this football season at Wager Talk. 29-14 and 14 combined record in NFL and college. That's 68% winners and 41.1 units of profit. It's in addition to being 8-2 and two in all sports here in October. Last weekend... Perfect 3-0 and in college football, including best bets on Texas A&M and Washington. Then I went 2-0 and in the NFL on Sunday, including a 5% max bet on Denver. I'm locked and loaded with three 4% best bets in college football on Saturday. Might be adding a fourth play as well. Stay tuned. That'll be added to that package if you've already purchased it. Also, my top two NFL sides for Sunday are already up and available as well. WT. Dot buzz slash BP is where you get it all, including that three-day all-access from myself and Mark Zinno for just $69. You get every play from the both of us for that price. Great deal there. And that is going to do it for Saturday's edition of the Power 5. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, go ahead and smash that like button. Until next time, guys, let's cash some tickets.